Um, we only have one hour, so uh, we have three speakers. Um, could I have your attention? Thanks. Um, we have three speakers, so I'd like to get started on time, if that's possible. And um, this panel is on the geopolitics of China's rise. Um, we have a distinguished panel here. Uh, my name is Tom Christensen. I uh, teach international uh, politics and, interna and inter international affairs, Chinese foreign policy, at Princeton University. Um, and I previously served in the State Department as De Deputy Assistant Secretary of State with responsibility for policy towards China, Taiwan, and Mongolia. Um, it's my honor to moderate this panel, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to speak at length, and I'm going to um, introduce the three speakers at the outset and then just turn it over to them. On my right is Eli Ratner, a rising star in the uh, study of international relations in general and in uh, the study of China's foreign relations uh, specifically. And um, I had occasion to look at Eli's uh, background and uh, full file at one point in my uh, uh, recent career. And uh, I say I was really impressed with it because it's really the spirit of what a program I run at Princeton is about called China in the World and what the NBR is really about, which is to encourage Asia specialists to think broadly about the region and the world and to encourage br international relations experts to think uh, hard about the importance of Asia as a region for the rest of the world. And Eli, uh, his background really uh, supports that. And if I get this wrong, you can cut me off. But my impression is that he trained first as an international relations expert. Along the way, came to the conclusion that Asia was a really important region for the 21st century in international relations, and then dove in and decided to learn Chinese. Uh, and uh, said that if you want to know about international relations in the 21st century, you need to know Chinese, just like uh, you used to have to know a lot about the Soviet Union during the Cold War if you were going to uh, if you were going to understand international relations in the last century. And I have a lot of respect for that decision process. He's currently at RAND as a political scientist, um, and he has a PhD from the University of California at Berkeley, uh, the the uh, the homestead of uh, one Robert Scalapino, and. Um, he also uh, served as a staffer on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. That's correct, right? Senate, Senate Foreign Relations Committee. So it's a great pleasure to have him on the panel. Uh, to his right is uh, Christopher Toomey, uh, someone I've known for a long time. Why? Because he was uh, an advisee of mine in graduate school and a student of mine in graduate school at MIT, and graduate school takes a long time. So we, not, not particularly long for Chris. I'm not picking on Chris. He was actually, he actually finished uh, quite efficiently uh, by, by general standards, but uh, I've known him for a long time. A tremendous respect for him. He's now at the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey. Uh, where he's an assistant professor. He is uh, a leader in his generation of uh, uh, scholars working on China security studies, and he also embodies uh, the principles of, the, of NBR in that he uh, does scholarly research and writes uh, scholarly books such as his uh, excellent manuscript, which is coming out of Cornell, or has come out of Cornell, uh, The Military Lens, uh, uh, Doctrinal Differences and Deterrence Failure in U.S.-China Relations. It's a fine manuscript. Um, and he also engages with the government. Um, and when I was in the government, he came and briefed me on one of his uh, nuclear projects, uh, and it was very useful indeed. Uh, to his right is June Teufel Dreyer, who probably needs no introduction in this uh, audience. Uh, she's a professor of political science at the University of Miami. I've known June a long time as well. Um, and June and I uh, have had the privilege of attending many of the um, PLA conferences that are now hosted by NBR uh, uh, at Carlisle Barracks uh, in Pennsylvania. And uh, she also uh, served with great distinction on the Economic and Security Review Commission, which is a congressionally mandated commission uh, that does hearings, et cetera. And uh, uh, our mutual colleague, Larry Wurzel, ran that. And Dan Blumenthal, I think, is in the house somewhere out there. He also uh, ran that commission. And I had the uh, pleasure of testifying to them both as an academic and as a government official. Um, she's been an advisor to the Chief of Naval Operations. She has been uh, uh, a researcher at the Library of Congress. And, uh, and the, on the scholarly side, here's something that a lot of us in the room who write books will envy, is that uh, her book on Chinese politics is in its eighth edition. Um, eighth edition, right? That's not easy. So um, I will uh, leave it at that, and I will turn it all over first to Eli. Um, it's a great pleasure to be the moderator on this panel, and uh, I'm going to give each of the speakers no more than 10 minutes, and I'm going to be strict because these fine people out here want to ask questions, and uh, they want to pick your brain. So uh, over to you, Eli. Okay.